In this video, we are going to talk about typography in Webflow, pixels and why you probably shouldn't use them everywhere, M and REMs, what are they and how they work. Let's get started. Hey friends, this is Kavarza again with another Webflow tutorial. So for today, we'll be talking about CSS units, pixels, M's and REMs, what makes them different from one another. And also this video can be an introduction to learning wizardry method by Timothy or fluid responsive by FinSuite. If you don't know any of those, don't worry, we'll touch on them in a bit. Uh, but let's start with pixels, uh, the unit that we all know and familiar with. For the matter of this tutorial, we have this design here ready. Um, the first section being in pixels. So pixels are absolute units, um, very simple. It means 50 pixels stays 50 pixels um, and it doesn't depend on other elements in the design or on the viewport. So if I change um, the size, it, uh, it won't change the size of the button if I change um, the size of the window, right? So we know pixels pretty simple. So M's, uh, what is an M? Uh, these are actually from the print time and 1M uh, meant the width of the letter, the capital letter M. Uh, but now on the web, they are defined completely differently. So the size of um, the unit M is defined by its parent and um, defined by its parent, it, uh, it actually means it's multiplied by the size of its parent. So to put it in practice here, uh, we have this H2 heading at 3.5 M and this size is actually multiplied by 16 pixels because the, the size of the, the parent, the, the font size is 16. So 16 multiplied by 3.5, we have 56 pixels. That's why these two look identical. Uh, the browser at the end of the day uh, renders this as 56 pixels. Um, but what's really special about M's is that they compound just this uh, multiplication that I mentioned, it compounds. That means uh, if we have another parent uh, set in a dif set differently, um, it will uh, multiply it. But, but now let's uh, choose this grid and change this from, change the font size from 16 to be 1.2 M's. And what it does is now, Everything inside here, we had 3.5 is now multiplied by 1.2 and then multiplied by its parent 16 pixels. And if we change this from 16 to be 18, uh, everything gets even much bigger because now it's 18 pixels from here uh, multiplying uh, by 1.2 and then here, for example, we have 3.5 multiplied by 3.5 and it um, then renders at this size. Uh, the same goes for here, the paragraph and even uh, the bottom margin, even uh, the padding, everything is in M and everything compounds. I know it gets a bit difficult to, uh, to keep track on this. Um, and indeed, that's the reason why REM was invented. So um, M's can be really handy if you need, uh, if you really know and uh, need this compounding effect, uh, which we'll get into in a second, but for the most part, um, we use REMs because they are simplified and they are more accessible. So what does that mean? So one REM is, uh, it's actually root M. So uh, the root is for the HTML root element. That means um, the size of one rem is not coming from the parent, but it's coming from the root uh, HTML file, uh, which is by default 16 pixels. So basically we can say, if I change the parent here, so this is 3.5 rem again, uh, but if I change the parent from 16 pixels to 20, nothing changes because the, the direct parent uh, is not affecting the text in uh, which is in rem only the html root element is affecting this but where would you change this so if we publish this changes now note that the pixels and the rams are equal and we change the m um, um, section and this is bigger so why should we use rem 
if I go to the browser setting here and search for font settings or just font size, just search size. Here we have font size and I can change it from medium uh, recommended, which is 16 pixels uh, to very large. This changes the whole browser setting and the HTML uh, root file. And if we go back to the site now, we see that this section uh, has scaled up uh, quite a lot, uh, even more than the M and the pixel section stays the same. So if a user decides, this is a this is an accessibility thing. If a user wants to make the font bigger, if we use REM for everything, including the, the padding and the um, um, including the padding and the margin, everything, we allow uh, users to you know have the option uh, to make the font bigger or smaller. Uh, this won't affect M's and won't affect pixels. That's why we are giving users the freedom um, to choose the font size that they want, the default font size that they want. Uh, you note that here the height gets messy and there's also a nice trick here about it uh, or something that you should all consider doing. Uh, if we go to the body all pages, we can here change the font height. Uh, for this one, it's not affecting um, this exact element, but nevertheless, I'll change it to be 1.2 uh, and then dash. This is a unitless, um, it's not a unit and it just multiplies by um, the size so 16 multiplied by 1.2 we don't know we don't need to know the answer uh, to this it's just uh, that we can set it to be something more than 1.1 or 1.2 depending on the font uh, for this one it's because because it's a heading we can change it from the all h2 uh, if we set it uh, we change it back 1.3 uh, we need to set it um, exactly on it to specify it and then 1.2 it affects it and now we see it's uh, changed everywhere so published again and we can come back to the browser setting change it back once maybe uh, even to try very small it's for me really difficult to read now uh, but if somebody for whatever reason wants to make uh, the font really small, they can do it. We are giving this freedom. Uh, but does that mean that we have, we don't have more design control? Does that mean that users can uh, basically mess up with our design? Somehow, yes, um, in a sense they can, but if they really want to go out of their way and go to the browser setting and change it, they probably have a reason and we better uh, allow them to do it. But if you want to uh, develop your design the way you want it and in proportion to to the screen size of the user, so basically the typography, the, the spacing, the sizing, everything stays fluid. So if the screen size gets smaller, the type also gets smaller. Uh, we can scale things uh, based on M and multiplying them by the viewport. This is basically the wizardry method. Um, in theory and I'll just show you an example and uh, I'll show you how to do it. So uh, taking the uh, Flux Black Friday page uh, as an example, uh, by making this section smaller and bigger you see that the text and everything, even uh, the, the images, everything gets smaller and bigger. So it stays uh, proportion to the viewport uh, and changes based on that. If you no, um, notice that here the, the text actually stays the same because, and also the button, because I didn't want these to change. I just wanted uh, the, the big heading to take almost the whole space. And at the point, uh, for example, here, exactly here, it stops growing. So if we have a huge monitor or the, the user is um, looking at this site on a big, uh, very high density, uh, high resolution screen, they won't see like a too, too big of a text. Uh, it stops growing somewhere. So to do that, um, we have the M's here just the way it was. Uh, and 
as we talked about it, it's multiplied by its parent. So for the parent, we can say instead of 18 pixels, for example, we can set it to be one viewport width. Uh, and now it's everything is multiplied by one viewport width and basically uh, scaling with that. That means if I make uh, my screen smaller, you see that the text gets smaller here too and everything, everything that is based on M gets smaller and on a much bigger screen, it gets even bigger. Um, in order to stop that, we can add uh, a little bit of custom code. So again, wizardry and just with a little bit of custom code, we can st uh, stop it from growing here, but it's probably too much for this video to discuss that. But just so you know that you can have the whole section set to be uh, one view W, the font size, and then everything inside of it to be one, uh, to, to be uh, in M. Now, this is just for one section. And if you want to develop the entire website based on wizardry uh, method, uh, by the way, I'll make sure to uh, link the video, the main video in the description. Uh, you can set body all pages to one view W and then use every uh, use uh, M's for everything. So for the paddings, for the type, uh, even the size. So here the width and the height, you could uh, use M's and scale everything based on that. So this is um, wizardry method, um, but just the starting point of it. And you can watch the video in detail uh, I mentioned in the description. But there is also another uh, method developed by FinSuite. Uh, I'm not really uh, fluent with this one, uh, no pun uh, intended. Uh, this is a uh, fluid design and it's, it's super new. There are not many videos about it, but uh, what you do here is you play around with these uh, custom breakpoints. Uh, so for example, this is desktop, then tablet and the two mobile breakpoints, and you can play around with how much things uh, scale, and then you get this code. You don't have to write any code. You just play around with these sliders. You copy the code and you go back to the design. I already have this HTML embed uh, element. You can just paste in the code. I already have the code here uh, as comment. So this is the code you paste it in. And now suddenly uh, everything that you had based on RAM uh, becomes scalable and fluid. Uh, the way it works is this code is calculating the RAM and adding it to viewport. That's how I understand it, uh, adding it with viewport uh, a unit and in different media queries. So these are essentially our breakpoints, just like these. And the way I showed it, you play with them here and you just change them here. Uh, this one probably needs a little bit of playing around with, but it's very promising. Uh, and I'm actually, uh, I want to try this uh, a bit more, but again, this is something really new. So what do we have discussed here? Uh, pixels, as I mentioned, they stay the same. Um, they are the same everywhere. M's, they, they are basically um, multiplying by their direct parent and they compound and we use that compounding effect uh, by setting our body uh, font size to one view w to create wizardry method and you know scale everything based on viewport and rams and um, you know finsuite uh, client first uses ram for everything and with the new tool that they have you just basically turn on a button. You just copy the, the text, uh, the, the code, paste it in, and now everything is fluid. Uh, I have to try this a little bit more, but I will also mention this in the description so you can try it for yourself. Uh, one last thing for um, to mention here, if I come to here, the content um, section in the uh, for the M version and change the max with um, you know, from pixel being pixel to be something like 90 M's. Uh, and if I publish again, you see something interesting happens uh, with M, something that is not really um, user accessible. So reloading here, you see this gets really big. And if I zoom in and out, the design stays the same. This is, this is exactly that uh, 
disabling zoom function. But here with the um, FinSuite method, we still can zoom in and out and make the text smaller and bigger, which is super accessible. So I'm actually looking forward to using this uh, a bit more, but I found, I still find this method, the wizardry one a bit easier, maybe because I'm more experienced with it. Okay. So one last thing here, uh, I'm personally using rems more and more every day, um, moving away from pixels as much as I can, uh, to use rem and adopt it for good forever for user accessibility. Uh, and I would say you should too. Uh, I know you might uh, be saying it's a bit difficult. How do I convert the, these numbers? I have it in Figma in pixels. True. So for example, here we have this tech, this uh, text headline at 72 pixels. How do I know? How do I calculate? Do I need a uh, calculator all the time with me? No, actually you don't. You can use uh, Webflow as a calculator. So here um, I'm just changing that to the default again. Uh, we have 72 pixels, so we can say 72 divided by 16. Why 16? Because the RAM, uh, assuming that the browser setting is 16 by default, we divide it by 16 pixels and we just type RAM after it. So Webflow does the calculation and enters it in RAM. So 4.5 here you go, you get it. Uh, you don't need a calculator. My math teacher wouldn't probably approve it, What? but we designer, we call it reducing the cognitive load. So thank you Webflow for putting that there. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching guys. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have a question, comment them below. I'll be there answering them. Until next video, peace.